Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Steve's Backyard Bike and Car Repair Tips. Today we're going to be doing a primary case oil change and clutch adjustment on a 2012 Harley Dyna Switchback. Um, the bike's got a 103 twin cam with a 6 speed transmission in it. I think that's pretty much what came in all the switchbacks. I'm going to go over some of the tools we need today. As for parts, we're going to need a new primary clutch cover gasket. I highly recommend you get the actual primary filler. It's a lot easier. It's a tight space. This clips in really nice. You're not spilling. You make sure you get the proper amount in. Now when I do say that, depending on the year of your bike, that actual piece that that tool for putting the fluid in can be a different size so if you go buy one please pay attention make sure it fits your bike uh, there is different openings different holes for uh, for the primary clutch cover uh, area so just uh, watch yourself when you do that I don't want you coming home with the wrong one we're gonna need a 5 8 wrench for the drain plug I will be torquing that back in a T27 for your primary housing cover. As far as the clutch adjustment goes, for your cable adjustment, you need a half inch and 9 16 wrench, an 11 16 and a T27 for the actual clutch adjustment. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change the or drop the oil out of the housing. Right here, this side, if you follow basically down from the center of where your clutch is, you will see a 5 8 drain plug. This is the drain for your primary. It's about a liter that's going to come out. I've got an old frying pan. Don't go steal one from your wife. Find something that fits under there that she's not going to be mad at you about later. It's an old one. We were going to throw it out. It's great for doing small fluid changes. So we are going to get our 5 8 wrench. Loosen it off. Now this is something I do yearly, change this fluid, just because, uh, you know, as you wear your clutch, the filings of the clutch get into your oil and get mixed up with it, so it's good to put some fresh stuff in there every year. Um, I changed this little O-ring last year. Every year to two years, you should be changing it. Now if you see it seeping after you've, uh, after you've changed your oil, it probably should have been changed and now you're gonna to have to go through this process all over again next thing I do is I'm gonna get the actual cover off here's a neat trick a lot of wrenches now have a uh, nut style piece at the top of the actual driver so if these are tight and they're hard to get Put a wrench over it, and away you go.
cover off. Put your screws and where you're not going to lose them. There we go. There's the old cover. Some people will reuse these. I don't recommend it. They're cheap. You got it apart. Replace it. Put a new one in. This is our clutch. So while the fluid's draining, we're going to get on to our clutch adjustment. Now what we'll actually be doing is we'll be backing this nut off and we'll be turning this in. Before I get to that though, we have to take the slack off the cable. So right here, your adjuster for your clutch cable is right there underneath. So let's see if I can get you placed down so I can get to this. There we go. So there might be a clip like mine, just above. Take clip off. And if this is really tight, you can always spray some lubricant down in it, something that's not going to hurt the rubber. Slide this up. You're going to take your half inch and your 9 16 Your 9 16 is actually your jam nut. Your half inch. Crack them free. Screw that jam nut up. Get it out of the way. Now you're going to simply turn this. As you turn this, it actually takes the adjustment out of the cable. And you'll see now, once I do that, this is loose. That's what you want. You have to get the slack you get slack into the cable so that you can actually do a proper clutch adjustment. I'll get you set back up here. Now we're going to do the actual clutch adjustment. Take your 11 sixteenths, you put it on the jam nut. You put your T27 Allen wrench in the end. That should be snug. It shouldn't be over tightened. You're going to fight to get it off. And that can be a problem. So we're going to back the jam nut off three or four turns. So you're actually going to turn this in with your fingers until you feel it snug. Now, don't go running this in hard just till you feel it touch. Just very lightly turn it in. It turns very easily. If you over tighten this you actually start to activate the clutch that's going to cause slippage not a great thing premature clutch life so I'm just snugging the jam nut back up take our 11 16 wrench there is a torque spec for this I believe it's 80 inch pounds or something most people don't have the tool to hold it and torque it at the same time I'm one of them just a simple Snug. It's all you need. Yep, we're good. Okay. While we're down here, we'll put our drain plug back in. Good to clean it off. It's got a magnet on it. It's going to catch all your filings, anything that's worn in there. So you get that clean. It's good to see. You can inspect it before you clean it off, see how much stuff's on there. This is obviously where your clutch does its work, so you're going to see some filings and whatnot on there. There is a torque spec for this drain plug, and we are going to torque it. This bike calls for 14 to 21 foot-pounds. I've got my torque wrench set for 19 foot-pounds. It's always good to find somewhere in the middle. Move our fluid out of the way here. And there it is. Let's just give our cover.
have her wipe here, keep it clean. Don't want oil in behind it when the new gasket goes on. So we're going to finish the clutch adjustment. Now right here is the adjuster we backed off earlier, which is actually made our actual clutch lever loose. So now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that back out. So you're going to turn it down and you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you can see this coming back out. You don't want this to be tight, 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 because that's actually starting to engage the clutch. What you want to do is bring it out and check it so often. You just want a little bit of free play. I believe they call for about an eighth of an inch. Right there is right about where I want it. So now you're going to turn this jam nut back down. Get your half inch and your nine sixteenths. Hold the adjuster with your half inch, and you're going to snug that nine sixteenths nut to lock it up again, so it doesn't adjust on you while you're going down the road. You're going to put your boot back over. Like I said before, if it was uh, tight coming off, to put a little lubricant on it. Same goes for going back on. Doesn't hurt to put a little lubricant on there anyways. Keeps everything free inside. There we go. Put the clip back on to hold it onto the frame. Now we're going to come back over. And we're going to put our fluid in here. Once again, up to you, but I, I prefer using something like this. This is actually made for doing this job. Just makes life easier. Go to your your actual manual that came with your motorcycle will tell you the quantities that that's required as far as fluid for everything in your motorcycle it gives you most of your most of your specs but uh, an actual service manual is the best bet to, to go on to uh, actually give you everything you need to know about your motorcycle it calls for just under one liter it's actually one quart and this is 1.05 quart, so we're just gonna leave a little bit left in it. Good way to know if you've overfilled this is when you pull this out, or even beforehand, if it starts leaking over the top with the bike standing straight up and down, you'll know you've overfilled your primary. Perfect. If you're not sure, you're not comfortable with doing it that way, get a measuring cup and actually measure it out. I've done a few of these, so I'm used to where it needs to be. Okay. Pull our filler out. Make sure everything's clean. Gasket says right here towards clutch. You're going to put it towards the clutch when you install it. 
the actual top hole has almost an, an arrow shape in it, just so you know which way you're going here. Before I do that, I'm actually going to put just a little bit of blue Loctite on each one of these nuts. Don't overdo it, just a little dab on part of the thread, just to help keep it in place. I've actually got the paste style Loctite, which I prefer, a little friendlier to work with. It's almost like a glue stick. Alright, so we're going to put our cover back on. The way I like to do it, so I'll put the gasket behind the cover. Get our top screw through here. Just get it started. And then we'll go around and start the other four. Okay, now I'm going to start evenly drawing them in. Now, there is a torque spec for these. I personally don't know anybody that uses a torque spec for these. If that's what you're comfortable with doing, you go right ahead. This isn't, obviously you can tell by the size of them, something you crank down. Go around and get them snug. And depending on whether you're using a ratchet, I suggest using just a little short one. Or like what I've got, because this is what I have with the T27. I'll put my wrench back on here. And I'm just going to give them just a little umph. And do it in a star pattern. And there you have it. That is your clutch adjustment and primary fluid change on a DynaSwitch Back 103 Twin Cam. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this, between I, I'll be working on this. I have a Honda motorcycle. We're doing uh, top end on a Kawasaki, and we're working on various cars and such as they come in. I'll do some videos on what I'm working on. Subscribe.